Welcome to Rebel Without Applause, where we enthusiastically explore the intersection of sports, entertainment, and culture. I'm your host, Maurice Bob, and today we have a very special guest on the line. He is a multimedia artist out of Houston, on, a, on his way to the come up. You got to keep an eye on his brother. His brother's name is Tyler Duvaux, and uh, welcome to the program. How you doing, sir? It's good. It's good. I'm good. Uh, it's Duvalier. The Penelope. Okay, my, my, my bad. Not nah, straight. Uh, my mother, I feel like a, the antidote behind it is like my, I have a long name. Like my middle name is, is Duvalier and Caesar uh, for whatever reason. Uh, Duvalier was a, a Haitian dictator. <laughs> you know? Ah, okay. Uh, I, Haitian. I, huh? You're Haitian. I'm not Haitian, man. I'm not, man. But it's just like oh, wow. okay. the name I inherited. So it's just like I'm I'm here. Now I'm here, you know. So okay. it's weird. Um okay. yeah, it, it, she just she didn't spell it because she didn't spell it in the in the correct way, in the actual French way. So it's just I appreciate her for it. <laughs> but <laughs> I always gotta explain every time. So hey, well, you know, uh you know how it is. Uh yeah. You gotta make sure people, but keep us on point. Make sure we pronounce it right, uh, because you know, uh, here in the future, we're gonna have to pronounce it multiple times. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, first of all, let's uh, let's start with the uh, your most recent series. Um, you know, I really like this for the love of the game. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about you know uh, what sparked that and kind yeah. of where you want to take um, you know everybody on this journey? Yeah, man, it was really uh, a number of things because uh, I, I really only make I only make work uh, that I feel. So you know, I've always loved basketball, and um, you know, and I always had it in mind that I, I would do a basketball series, but I really didn't know in what way I would do it, how I would do it, things of that nature. So I was just making things out as I would normally make things, and it's like Kobe Bryant died. You know what I mean? And it's like he, I was. A huge fan of Kobe Bryant. Um, I'm still am, and it's like uh, you know to the point where I'm like, you know, watching his interviews and studying his interviews and like watching documentaries, just listening to how he think about stuff. You know, like I, I really loved when he played. He was my favorite player, but you know, once he retired and he was able to just talk so much more about himself, um, it really gave me insight to his mindset and the type of person that um, he was. Not really on the ground level, but I guess on the, in a uh, philosophical level. And a lot of things that he would speak about, you know, we're just kind of working and, you know, being dedicated dedicated to your craft and always learning and picking the brains of people who are like, came before you and things of that nature. It's like, it's common sense, you know, it's practical stuff, but it's, it's just not, it's not said enough uh, among successful people, you know, it's just not really said enough. So, you know, I made my first piece, be, you know, just because he passed and I was, I was really affected by it, you know, just as a fan, I, I, re I had realized how much of an impact he had in my life. You know, I realized that he was a hero to me and I took a lot of what he said and I use it in my everyday life, subconsciously and consciously. Um, so that's how it started off. And then, you know, literally after that, you know, that's kind of like around February. So, you know, once the pandemic got to a point to where everyone had to close up shop, you know, there is no basketball. So I'm literally, you know, Laker fan. I had to sit through Robert Sacre and, and Kendall Marshall and I had to like sit through, we had <laughs> Troy Murphy. We had Troy Murphy. Yo, we had Troy Murphy. Josh McRoberts and Pal Gasol, those are our fours at one time. You know what I'm saying? With Kobe Bryant and Derek Fisher, we were trash. So it's just like, all right, I get to this point where LeBron's with the Lakers. I'm not really a LeBron guy, but LeBron with the Lakers. Lakers, the team is doing well, you know, and then like the whole season stops. So I'm like, you know, that sucks. And then there's this whole period of where like, you know, you're adjusting to this and, you know, Michael Jordan documentary come out and then, it makes me relive my childhood. I'm like, man, this is like, I wasn't even an adult when this happened. I was like five, six, you know, seven, eight years old. So it, it really made me realize at that moment how old I was. <laughs> you know, <what> I'm <laughs> I just turned 30 this year. So 
it just it, a lot of things came to a head. I'm like, man, like my favorite player passed away. Like if there is no basketball, you know, it's like these people like were like the main part of my childhood, like Michael Jordan and things of that nature. So when, you know, when the league came back, I was excited and I just wanted to like really just honor those those men who were just on my television screen when I was a kid, because I, I was able to soak up so much nostalgia, like, like just watching the Michael Jordan documentaries, like, and it was just so much nostalgia. I just started watching like old all-star games just because, like, for, I was for like a week straight. I was just put on my TV, just have YouTube. And they really have some good channels on YouTube where you would like find some very obscure games and stuff like that. So I was just, just kind of playing it, ba- like just basking in nostalgia since there is no like real hoop going on, you know? So yeah, once the league came back, I was like, man, I just want to just celebrate, you know, because it's like, these, these are like my childhood heroes and, you know, they could pass one day, you know, my favorite player passed. So it's just like, you know, it, it, we should honor these, honor these men for, you know, how they inspired us. You know, even if, uh, even if sports may, you know, may not be entertaining to, you know, quote unquote intellectuals. I mean, anyone is publicly doing well in their craft should inspire you. And that's, you know, that's for me, that's my big takeaway in anything, you know, but especially sports because I love it so much, especially basketball because I love it so much. So, you know, that's pretty much was the, the foundation and, and essence of uh, me creating it, you know, it, it didn't you know, start out as a series. It just kind of became one over time. So now uh, I noticed, you know, obviously you had Kobe, uh, but you also had Steve Francis, Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, Tracy McGrady. So obviously I'm thinking uh, because those are Houston or former Houston players, is that why you focused on those or? Uh, well, this, what's uh, going on? I mean, there's a there's a store out here called I'm not sure where you at. But there's a store out here in Houston called Premium Goods. It's like a it's a boutique store that's been out here for like year like 16 years now. And I used to go there as a kid, like in high school. I wanted to get a job there. They never hired me. You know, <laughs> I, would, I would I would overdraft my accounts buying shirts there, buying shoes, and like waiting on waiting on a check to go you know purchase. So. You know, they liked my they liked my series and they wanted to like, you know, sell my stuff at their store. And I was just like, yo, if I'm a if I'm gonna do something with you guys, I'm a you know, I would much rather make something totally new for you guys. And you know, they're just they're big on Houston. You know, they're big on Houston. So I just had to really just do it for Houston, like just give them a whole Rockets, a whole Rockets thing. I have a love hate relationship with the Houston Rockets. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh I would love to see the team win. I would love to see the city win, but over the years, bro, our GM in, in Houston, bro, has just – just all the GMs, bro, just questionable choices, bro, like questionable. I can't even really – so while Houston has had great players, we haven't had deep, long playoff success. So it's just like Lake Show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. Uh, so, you know, when it comes down to, uh, you know, Kobe um, – you know, I'm imagining that the uh, mama mentality really, really stood out to you. Um, you know, are you taking that approach, you know, as you move forward as an artist? Yeah, everything. I don't feel like I'm good at all. Like, just because there's always people better than you, just because there's always people, like, hungrier than you and at times maybe more dedicated than you. So it's just like you always got to be in the gym, like, constantly. Like, you always have to be in the gym. Like, there's no reason to, like – rest on your laurels because it's just like once once that once that moment or that event or you know once that is done and you celebrate it that night or maybe the day after whatever whatever it's over with now you got to get back to work you know you want to celebrate more gotta get back to work so um that's just you know that's that's what the mama mentality is it's just like dedicating yourself to the craft and and not being too uh not really being swayed by anything outside of you. You know, that's, that's kind of the same teaching of like Taoism and Bruce Lee spoke on that and things like that. So it's, it's definitely a lot of Eastern philosophy behind uh, the Mamba mentality. And um, so, it, you know, I was already studying it before, you know, in, in different aspects, but, you know, once like Kobe was doing interviews and he started explaining what it was, I'm like, this is so much of what I already, 
like to do it's cool that he puts it in a name and you know so it's definitely me and my guys man we all like push each other we had different avenues but we all push each other to be like the best version of ourselves and just never being content with where we are yeah you know being appreciative of where you are but never being content and steadily working forward is what i take what the mamba mentality is like being the student of whatever you're trying to do so um i definitely i definitely uh buy into it i want to do better i don't feel like i'm doing good <laughs> like, straight up okay and um you know uh when it comes to kobe I, you know i feel like you know I'm, I'm worried that we didn't quite give him all his flowers that he was due uh, before he passed, but you know, uh, I, I think from a you know players in the league standpoint, they really all considered him to be their goat and you know the kind of guy that they fashioned their game after. So a lot of them, you know, they did give Kobe his flowers while he was still here. So yeah. um, you know, I'm happy to hear that at least. Um, now, can you uh, you have a very distinct uh, style? You know what's your pieces, um, and from what I understand, you call it uh, Afro pop. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, uh, Afro pop was just a. I think I thought it was like a quirky name to, to describe the work. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of uh, Takashi Murakami and his earlier work. You know, he called it super flat. So I was thinking of something to call my work that sounded as cool as super flat. So uh, Afro pop was was it. Initially, when I was making collages earlier, like I started in like 2015 making collages. At first I was doing like uh, photography and film, but over time I just I started wanting to make different things to express myself. So I was making uh, collages and they were kind of like more traditional abstract collages where there's like a lot of different scenes and a lot of different, uh, you know, to make one body of a piece is a lot of different scenes and you pull them together, you know, similar to like Romeo Bearden and stuff. And, um, you know, I just kind of felt like my message was too, it needed to be condensed. So, you know, I needed to put my feelings into a person. So I, I created, I really just initially made a black person, you know, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't that much. It, I didn't think about it that much. I made a black person and I continue to, put this black person in these situations to help you know express my feelings because all my work is autobiographical um so you know it just you know people started liking it and um so i like i just started doubling down on it like i already have like motivations and inspirations from like anime and you know other like chinese artists and stuff like that and just cartoons as a general like looney tunes and adventure time and all these type of things so i'm like you know this ultimately that's what i want to do so i i can do it where i'm at right here you know i, I could try to make these collages look as animated as possible you know so i, I want it i want it to look like it's like a, a cartoon world in the sense because i just feel like with black with black characters depicted on television they're always in normal situations normal environments they're never they're never in a fantastical world. Like Luke Cage is in Harlem. Um, it's like the boondocks, were, they were just in the suburbs somewhere, you know? Um, they're never like in space. They're never in a, in a land where there's like mystical creatures. You know, those are really, I wouldn't say they're reserved, but you know, white people have those, like those characters, Asians have those characters. Pretty much everyone that does animation will put their characters in all these type of situations, except uh, except uh, black people. They don't put their people in that deal situation. Even Fillmore, I had to think about it, but even Fillmore, I think he was like an Asian or something like that. But he had some science, you know, some science elements to it. But it still wasn't a fantastical world. Static Shock, he was like in Dakota, you know. It, it wasn't nothing super fancy. So that's kind of my my inspiration behind the images and everything. Just kind of wanting to have black people in, in these spaces, you know, these imaginative spaces. Um, you know, I feel like that's important for kids to see. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I noticed that, you know, like, what do you describe, how do you describe, like, you know, the, like, say, for instance, in the uh, Portal of the Game series, uh, you know, so uh, Tracy McGrady, for instance, he's, you know, charcoal, uh, uh, black in color with kind of the exaggerated eyes. 
Um, you know, can you describe kind of that that style? Uh, I feel like I just did. It's, it's just Afro. It's just it's, it's just the style that I do. You know what I'm saying? It's just okay. It's just it's just my style. <laughs> it's okay. just my style. It's like okay. every like for me like when I when I created all my characters like well I created my character and I like you know decided to build and build and build. I made um, I'm pretty much I, I made them that way so that every black person can identify that this is a black person and every every. Okay. Black can put themselves in their shoes. Uh, there's a book that I read by Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. It's called the, uh, the Keys to the Colors. And um, it was like a whole book about how how uh, white supremacy used the color black against black people and, you know, and make it a negative thing. And so for me, I'm like, I'm just going to use things that they took for, you know, to make us feel bad, you know, and not and not and not associated with that at all, because it's they have nothing to do with it. Like they have nothing to do with my skin color being black. They have nothing to do with the texture of my hair. They have nothing to do with how my lips are full. So it's just like, these are black features for real. Like there's nothing you can take away from me about it. I'm not gonna let you make me feel bad about black features. So when I decided to create characters, I, I literally was like, you know, even when I was like initially to make my, my dude, just to make a black dude, it's like, I made him, as symbolic of a black person as possible. It's just like, there's no way to cut it across it. It's like a light skinned black person should hate on it. A dark skinned black person should hate on it because this is just a black person. Like everyone should be able to like come to agreement that this is a black person having an experience that is similarly felt by black people around the nation because it's the, it's like my story, you know? So, um, you know, even when it came to, you know, making, making them basketball players and stuff like that. It's like, I, I didn't find the, I didn't find the reason to, to you know, differentiate from what I would do normally, because it's like, I feel like in basketball, for sure, for sure, we for sure, like, place ourselves in the feet of these athletes when we watch the game. I would do this, or I would do that. Or even at your house, you're like taking a shot and you're like, oh, Jordan, or, you know, oh, Kyrie, you know, you're doing all these different things. You're, you're literally putting yourself in their shoes anyway. So it's just like, you know, I put my kids like, it's, it's like, it's not necessarily the athlete themselves that's being portrayed, you know, it's just my character, you know, in, in their, in, in, you know, in their jersey doing the thing that they would do is, it's, it's, in, it's, it's anybody, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's anybody who loves basketball, loves that player and remember that, remember that dunk from this game or, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, that's, that's the concept behind it. You know, my, my concept is truly uh, visually inclusion of all black people. Like I, I want black people to uh, look at black images, no matter how black images look from black people and be like, yes, black. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. I like the way you explained that. I, was, uh, I really like that. Um, so, uh, tell us, you know, uh, where can people find more of your work and how can they, um, you know, contact you, reach out? Yeah, man, uh, big Instagram, for real. I mean, you have the website. I have tylerduvalier.com, T-Y-L-E-R-D-E-A-U-V-E-A.com. Uh, and and it, I update it. Like I, I put stuff on there, but, you know, mostly people, you know, they don't they don't go to websites like that no more. Websites kind of, just, you know, they sit for a moment. Um, but you can buy, like, the, like the Kobe Bryant piece and, you know, the Allen Iverson piece and the Shaq piece, you can get those from the shop in my store. Uh, but then you have like, I, I just came out with hoodies and stuff like that. I'm super excited about it. It's very cool. Uh, that was in collaboration with Premium Goods. Like you can really, we had a pre-order. Uh, so now it's like getting the numbers together, making the orders and like shipping them out. But outside of that, you can only get them at Premium Goods. It's like you're selling for the rest of the month. So. Um, that's pretty much the only place you can really get those. But IG, for real, like IG, um, Tyler Duvalier on Instagram, you know, you can contact me. If you message me with something intelligent, I'll definitely respond. If I if I don't, I'll just delete it. I won't even, <laughs> I won't even entertain it. But if you come to me with something, you know, substantial, I'll definitely talk to you about it. And, you know, it's whatever. I'm, I'm pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty chill, so. It's all good. That's where you can find me for sure. Perfect. 
All right. Well, uh, hey, man, it's uh, been a pleasure having you on. Um, you know, everybody, make sure you go out and check out Tyler's work, uh, especially that um, great What a Love of the Game series. Um, thanks for everyone for hanging out. And uh, please like and subscribe and tell your friends. Um, Rebel without applause. Uh, to all those rebels out there, please stay rebellious. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.